Now, what we saw here was was kind of a best case scenario. You know, I, I kind of set everything up so that we had the right trusts available. Uh, not the kind of thing that you would typically see in advance when you're doing this by yourself at home. So what I'd like to do now is, uh, you know, those of you who, who don't need any more assistance on this, just go right on to the next video in which you can go ahead and do this as an exercise. But if you'd like to see this demonstrated again, this time using that other buffering mechanism, the API based buffering, it's the older mechanism. Go ahead and watch the rest of this video. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get this done without any preparation, just to show you what it would look like if you were doing this for real. You know, when you typically forget to do things like set up the, uh, the, the trusts in advance and that kind of thing. So let me go ahead and, and reconfigure this so that instead of using that, um, that buffering subsystem, we instead make use of that API based buffering. So I'll shut down everything that I've currently configured here. And so let's switch over for buffering type. I'm going to choose this API buffer server. And we're getting the same kind of warnings we saw before. You know, are, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, it's going to start up buffering. A any interface needs to be stopped and restarted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I go ahead and went ahead and made that switch. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and do some changes to the buffering settings if I need to. As I said, we typically leave the defaults. I have to make sure that I've got my correct buffered servers there. And that looks good, so I don't need to make any changes there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stop this for right now. I'll stop that for right now because I do want to start this all when I start up my interface. So let me go ahead and remove this. This is no longer uh, going to be a dependency. Instead, I'm going to use this. It's called buff serve. Okay. Well, what would happen if I just went ahead and started all this up right now? If I start this up right now, uh, we will start up that uh, API based buffering, the, the uh, buff serve uh, .exe, That's a, as opposed to the pybuff ss. But what I think you're going to see is that part of this is going to fail. It's going to fail because we don't have the right trusts set up over here on the home node. Maybe I got lucky here. Maybe everything was already configured because of what I had done previously. But let's just double check. I'll go back and look at the last five minutes. And OK, so it says API BE, which I know from experience. That's my API based buffering. It says it is connecting. Did it actually connect though? No, we're getting an access denied here. Access denied. Yeah, API BE, no trust established, explicit login required. It can't do an explicit login because I believe that's disabled on this server. So this should have failed. Hmm, it's interesting. It doesn't explain why we're actually seeing data. Oh, there we go. I refreshed this. This was just sitting there uh, showing me old data, I think. If I refresh this, it, uh, it showed me that the data is actually missing. What I can learn from this is I can learn, let me get the name of this again. I can learn what is trying to connect and then I can set up a trust for whatever it is that is trying to connect. Let me see if I can go through this here. Here it is. It's called APIBE. That's the application name that we're picking up when it tries to connect. And it's coming from this IP address, 192.168.70.170. So with that information in hand, I should be able to go into my uh, trust uh, configuration screen here and add a new trust. And that's going to be a trust for the API based buffering. So I'll choose a new trust. Uh, I don't like using the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and just do it from scratch. Yeah, this, this is where you can choose the two of them. There we go. So instead of using the wizard, I'm just going to give this a new name. Let's call this buffering trust API, something like that. And here's my credentials, 192, 168, 70, 170. We're going to use 255 in all octets. And for the name, this is where we get that APIB with the letter E at the end of it. Now I'm going to map that to an identity that has privileges to write to that pi or the pi tags that are collected by the OPC interface. 
And that's something that I can I can just use the identity that was set up for the other trust. So that identity has the right permissions. OK, so with this new trust configured, I should be able to go back to my interface node. Let's stop the interface. I'll stop both the interface and the buffering. I'll go ahead and stop the interface. And remember, this interface is dependent on buff serve. So when I start the interface, it should start a buff serve. Stopping the interface, though, does not stop that buff serve. I need to do that by hand. I'll go in here. Let me go ahead and stop that. I'm going to stop it so that it can attempt a connection again. And I think we're ready to go. Let me go ahead and start up the interface. It reminds me that it needs to start up the dependent service, this buff serve, or the service that it is dependent on, buff serve. We go ahead and do that. And let's see the end result. There's a couple ways we can look at the end result. We can look at the log files, or we can just go out to the interface node, or to the home node. And let's see if we're gathering any data in Process Book. And that looks good. Let me see if I refresh the screen. If I refresh the screen this time, it looks good. Looks like it's, um, it is sending data. Previously, we were not able to see that data because the, uh, the buffering wasn't working. And let's take a look at our interface um, uh, messages from the message log and just verify that this was able to connect properly. I'll go ahead and refresh my screen. And let's take a look at the messages we're getting. OK, that looks like a successful connection. Let's see. Successful login. That's the OPC interface logging in. I want to see API BE. There it is. Yeah, this looks like a successful connection. Yeah, successful login, API BE because it was using that buffering trust API. So that's typically what you would have to do to make sure these configure properly. And uh, just the one last finish is let me go ahead and stop and restart Pi. And we should be able to see that the Pi system, or that the, uh, the buffering on the interface node uh, should now go ahead and work the way it did before, except now it's just using a different mechanism, a different type of buffering. OK, now let's switch over to Process Book and see if the, you know, it looks like the shutdown of the server has, um, you know, has taken effect here. Let me see if I refresh the screen. Yeah, it's can't connect to the server at all now. And what we should see now, if we go over to the interface node, is we should see the buffering is occurring on the interface node, except we're going to use a different utility now to take a look at it. The utility is called buffutil. And with buffutil, this is one for the API-based buffer. Uh, you have a, you know, a little menu here. We're going to show this primary buffer header. What we're looking for is this number of unprocessed entries. I'll go ahead and keep pressing 1. And as you can see, that number keeps getting bigger and bigger, 360, 372, 376. Again, what I just did to get into this, if you didn't see it, I'm on the PyPC bin. It's buffutil. That's what we use to measure the buffering that's occurring on the API-based buffer. And that looks like, similar to what we saw before, the buffering is going on there. So let me exit out of this. Now that we've verified that the buffering is working on this end, let me return back to our home node. Let me close out a process book. And let me restart Pi. My SRV start. That's a batch file. Now, while this is starting up, I can switch back over to my interface node. Let's take a look at buffutil again. And the finale that I'm waiting for is to see that unprocessed entries fall down to zero. Now, just as before, the interface and the buffering, they're going to constantly try to reconnect to the server. So it's when we get that successful reconnection, that's when the, uh, the buffering utility will send that data back to the server. And then it'll appear in the archive. Now, I shut this computer down, the Pi server down at 3.02 PM. So that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to see if, there, if the gap that would have been at 3.02 has is, is, is actually been filled with this buffered data. So from 3.02 to th about 3.05, 
we had data that was buffering. And there we go. If you noticed, I just refreshed this, and now the unprocessed entries have gone down to two from, where were they? They were at 1,075. So now, as I watch this, this buffering is going to just, it's going to process entries just five or six at a time. As you can see, as I as I do this now, the unprocessed entries is just going to change a very a very small amount as we uh, as we buffer that data and send it back over to the Pi system. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Process Book. Looks like the Pi system's completely started now. As before, what we're going to be looking for is we're looking for that data uh, having been restored between 302 and 306. Okay, so if I change this, let me change this to well, let's just go with one hour. And then I'll zoom in on just this period. That's between 302, or excuse me, 259 and 301. Let me scroll forward. And here we go. This is the period we're interested in. At 302 is when I shut the system down. But as you can see, that data, the data that would have been missing if we hadn't had buffering turned on, that data has been restored to the Pi server.